several great rivalries in the NHL, but none more intense than the one you're seeing tonight, the Battle of Alberta, the uncivil war between Calgary and Edmonton. Perhaps the most important rivalry our fragile minds could ever ponder upon would have to be the Battle of Alberta. A battle so inclusive and dark, locals don't murmur a peep about it until they've had their second dose of Tim Hortons. The Battle of Alberta is a tale of two teams, the original descendants of Alberta, the Edmonton Oilers, and the later settlers, the Calgary Flames. Jersey turned red, my bloody nose cross-checked. Each time I score a goal, you're just a punk. Everyone knows, think you're invincible. The Battle of Alberta continuing early in this one. The first encounter of these two took place in October of 1980 at the Northlands Coliseum in the native's home in Edmonton. The Oilers defeated the Flames five biscuits to three in a thrilling experience. The hatred was there, but Calgary was no match for the Edmonton Oilers, as the Oilers had someone so powerful they referred to him as the Great One. Goals, points, playoff wins, and Lord Stanley's Cup, season after season after season. The battle seemed to be won, but it was far, far from completion. The 1986 Smart Division Final, Future Flames captain Steve Smith scored an own goal. Friendly fire, or should we say, friendly flame. The Battle of Alberta historically has been great for this province and it's been great for the National Hockey League. This was a case where, you know, you had a nuclear arms race at one point where Edmonton under Glenn Sather had assembled this magical cast of players. And Cliff Fletcher here as a general manager was keeping pace in the arms race and you had great physical battles and great divisional standings battles. And it was a real Battle of Alberta and it engaged the fans in the province. It was magical even from the outside watching it. Thinking you're a tough guy, want a friggin' scrum guy? Let's have a friggin' fight, eh? On August 9, 1988, the Great One was traded to the Los Angeles Kings, a team no one knew existed. Chaos in Edmonton. Cheers in Calgary. The Flames were led by Lanny McDonald, Flurry, and Gilmore as they looked dangerous. They finished with close to 120 points that season. Joe Mullen had 51 goals and Al McInnes was establishing a name for himself. The Flames would finally win in 1989. Cheers, cheers everywhere. Where the Oilers would win the cup the year after the Flames. Because of these teams, Alberta was referred to as Death Valley for quite some time. Let's start with Jordan Everly, who scored one of the nicest first NHL goals of all time. Connor McDavid takes up two spots on this list. First, for scoring highlight reel goals like these. And who could forget this brutal injury? McDavid suffered a completely torn PCL, a torn knee joint, and a cracked tibia. Let's face it, these two teams have always hated each other, as displayed by this elbow by Marc Messier on Rick Natras in the 1991 playoffs. Here's Fleury, looking for his first goal of the series. Scores! Still one of the best celebrations of all time. Sorry, Steve. I have to show it. The Flames would win the game, eliminating the two-time defending champs. For eight consecutive years between 1983 and 1990, either the Oilers or the Flames were in the Stanley Cup Final. Wayne Gretzky in on goal, just scores in overtime. And of all of Wayne Gretzky's NHL goals, his personal favorite was an overtime winner against the Flames, capped off by a Glenn Sather salute to the crowd in Calgary. There was a real hate on for each other. I know it's a really strong word, but both teams disliked each other and it went from the coaching staff right down to the players. We're trying to hit people and hit people with a purpose. For a number of years there, it was the most fierce rivalry in hockey because both teams could play any, any which way you wanted to play. The rise of talent in Alberta once again has relit the flame to this rivalry. Matthew Kachuk has poked Zach Cassian one too many times. 
Each game has viewers and spectators on the edge of their seats, and the Battle of Alberta is once again relevant and elegant. The Battle of Alberta, a story so dark and sinister our history books never taught us about it in our school days. But I've seen better hands on a digital clock. You're talking like your first line when your third line talks. Thinking you're a tough guy, want a friggin' scrum guy? Think you're such a stud guy, but won't drop your gloves guy. Oh, you're that type? Always hack and slash type.